fellas welcome to module six of man up today we are going to talk about warfare warfare come on everyone loves a good war flick i can't remember i just watched one with tom hanks and he was like this uh captain of the of the ship and they were having to avoid u-boats and sink u-boats it was awesome uh, I like watching war flicks, but you know, sometimes it's hard for us to think like, what does it mean to actually wage war? What does it mean to, to win the war in the spirit? How do we be overcomers? Jesus talks about being an overcomer and we see in scripture that the Lord's desire is for us to, to engage in a battle. And so we're going to talk about how to win the war in the spirit. Uh, also, another way to say it is you got to fight for your right to insert the blank. You know, you could say to win the war in the spirit with your family, to win the war in the spirit at, and your job and your finances um, with your children. I mean, there's so many different things that we could insert. You might have grown up in the era where I sang that song you got to fight for your right to party. Um, but no, you got to fight for... Sometimes we got to fight for our right to not party. Um, come on, somebody. Uh, I know that I had to fight for that right to uh, to party in the Holy Ghost, but not in the flesh. <laughs> so uh, we got to win, man. We got to engage in the fight that God wants us to engage in. And so many times I think we're distracted engaging in the wrong fights. And so we're just going to talk about what does that look like and... Then I also want us to just make sure we have time, adequate time, where a lot of our discussion today, I want it to be about our testimonies. What are your testimonies? We, one of the points of we overcome is uh, we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. That's the last kind of main point. And so I want you to be thinking about your testimony. What does that look like? How can you share that? Uh, I want to hear from folks. I want to here, maybe maybe it's a testimony of what God's done through this men's group. Maybe it's a testimony of what God's done in your life at church recently. Maybe it's a testimony of how God has brought what he's brought you from and how that could be an encouragement to someone else. But we're going to just go through a few points of how to be an overcomer, how to win the war in the spirit. And, and the first thing is like the first is that we do overcome by winning the war in the spirit. And I remember when Becky and I were getting ready to church plant. The very first video teaching that we did about planting a church was Pastor Chris Hodges, one of our mentors, one of the guys that helped us in, in, in planting this church. The very first thing he said is, before you even think about planting the church, you've got to win the war in the spirit. And I thought that was such a fascinating concept is before you do any work, before you do any labor, you've got to you know, use the authority that God has given you to deal with what's happening behind the scenes that you and I may not see. And so many times we get so sucked into the here and now and the present that we don't necessarily think about the spiritual. And I, I remember him saying also that almost every war that is fought, it's first fought in the spirit. And I thought that was very, not capital S, like not the Holy Spirit, but l lowercase s in the sense of in the spiritual realm. And we need the capital S, we need the Holy Spirit to come in and help us win the victory because we can't do it on our own. We can't do it in our own strength. And so we got to win the war in the spirit. And I think we so many times we fight and we wage war in an earthly way, but we don't wage war in a spiritual way. And I love the scripture in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 um, and 12 through 12. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might or in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God. Ephesians 6 talks about what that armor is so that you can stand against the enemy schemes for our struggle. And here it is, is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of the evil and the heavenly realms. And so we see we got to get engaged in that. We, we, whether we're 
even want to acknowledge it or not, we already are engaged in that. So we need to win the war in the spirit. We need to trust uh, that God has got the power. He's got the power. I'm feeling, I'm just referencing a lot of old school songs today, guys. Sorry. Um, but he's got the power and we got to stand in it. We got to, we got to guard our hearts. We got to put on that full armor of God, not in the sense of like, you know, you're actually putting it on, but it's on you in Christ. And those, those weapons there are those things that we can use to, to fight the, the devil, man, God's already given it to us in Christ. And so we got to be aware. We don't want to be ignorant. We don't want to just be grinding in the day to day without, recognizing that we're in a battle second we overcome we are overcomers and we overcome by giving god our highest praise several different examples and, and can i just be can i share a pastoral confession to you sometimes like uh, that song we raise a hallelujah in the presence of our enemies louder than my unbelief my weapon is a melody um that's first time I heard that song, it bothered me. People were like, Pastor, we should sing that song in church. And I was like, man, I don't like the idea that worship is the way that I warfare. And partly the reason I don't like that idea is because I, don't, I like worship to be about worship. And I don't want to think, I don't want my motive to be messed up. I don't want to worship to win the war in the spirit. But it's really clear in scripture that, uh, you know, that's that song is actually biblical in the sense that when we engage in praise and when we engage it, God and when we give God our highest praise, regardless of our circumstances, there's a there's a, a power that's released that's supernatural. And we can see that here's a couple examples in scripture, Joshua chapter six. When the walls of Jericho fell down, they just marched around this this massive city that was a huge, strategically, they had to beat Jericho in order to win. And, um, and they did nothing for six days. They just marched around. They were in silence. They were in prayer. On the seventh day, they just shouted. The trumpets blew. They were giving God their praise. The walls fell, fell down and God gave them the victory. And so like even that song in good grace, let the praise go up and the walls come down. Like there's something that happens when we connect to, to God in praise that brings the victory. And so I just want to, I want to encourage you, be a man of praise, um, not just in church on Sunday mornings, but that's a good place to start. That's a good place to learn, but be a man of praise in your living room, put on some worship music and learn to engage in, in praise. Let your kids hear you singing to the Lord. When you come to church, maybe it's uncomfortable for you, but get to a point maybe where you can just lift your hands, do a little shout and come on, like, like get, like get, if, and if, if that might be something foreign to you, start somewhere, start somewhere, but get focused in on the Lord because we've all got a reason to give him praise and we become overcomers. We win in the spirit when we give God praise, regardless of our circumstance. Another example in scripture, Acts chapter 16, Paul and Silas, they're in jail. And they are like, um, I believe it was Paul and Silas. They were being beat. They were in big trouble and they're shackled and they, they start giving God praise and God opens the jail cell doors and, um, this jailer ends up getting saved. Such a cool story. Make sure you check it out. It's really cool. Um, and if I got the names wrong, don't judge. Don't judge, guys. Um, just check it out for yourself. It's an awesome passage of scripture. We overcome also by strategy and strength that comes from Jesus. Like God gives people strategy to win. I believe God gives strategic advice on how to win. We see this in Judges chapter 7 when Gideon is honing down his army to 300 men and God was doing that to get he had a he had a plan in mind and he wanted to see if Gideon was going to trust in his plan and and read that chat passage it's so cool what happens another verse I like it says some trust in horses or some trust in chariots, but we will trust in the name of the Lord, our God. That's Psalms chapter 20, 
verse 7, we recognize the, the, that God has a victory for us that's in His strength, not in our mighty power, not in our M16s or in our nuclear warheads or what. That's basically what they were saying back in the day. Like, if you had horses and chariots, like, you could win. But David was like, look, I'm not going to trust in these great weapons. I'm going to trust in the name of God. And so we know that our strength comes from God. And God wants to give you strategy. I just believe God even just, I pray that today as you're just listening to this or, or you take some time in prayer to be encouraged that God's going to give you strategy for victory in Jesus' name. The last one is that we overcome, and I started with this, but we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Revelations 12, 10 and 11 says, I heard this loud voice of heaven. John is getting a revelation of, of the victory that's in store for God's people. And he says, now, have, now has come the salvation and power of the kingdom of our God and the authority of the Messiah for the accuser. This is talking about the devil. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down. I cannot wait for that day. They triumphed. They triumphed over him, the devil, by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. There is something, and then, and then it goes on to say, and they love not their lives unto death. There is something powerful when you and I share about what specifically that, that Jesus has done for us. That we become overcomers. It says we overcome the enemy by the blood of the lamb, by the work that Jesus has done on the cross, and by the word of our testimonies. You've got something to share. You've got a testimony, even if you've been serving God for two seconds. You, I mean, I think people that haven't even been serving God got testimonies and they don't even realize it. Like, God spared me from death, from so many stupid things I did when I was high and drunk and so many terrible decisions that I made. And God spared me. And that, what has he done for you? you? You don't have to be a drug addict to have a testimony, man, maybe your testimony is that you never had to do that to experience the love of God, the freedom of God, the power of God. That's the testimony I'm, I'm praying for, for my kids. But God, God wants us to get engaged in, in warfare. And so just to summarize, we win the, we overcome by winning the war in the spirit. We overcome by giving God our highest praise. We overcome by strategy and strength that comes from Jesus. We overcome by the blood of Jesus and the word of our testimony. And I want you guys this meeting, this last session, this last module that we're having for, for this round of Man Up, I want you to share a testimony. You know, maybe you're watching this online. You're not going to be able to gather in person this time. Shoot me an email, Facebook message me. Man, I want to hear your testimonies. And also, if you've got a dream in your heart that you want us to be praying about, man, share that with us. How did you come to know the Lord? I'd love to, I'd love to hear that. I want to get even better as a church about sharing just stories of the victory of Christ among us. I love you guys. I hope you have a great session. We're going to share some info about some events coming up and then what does men's group look like this summer. We'll be sharing about that in the next couple of weeks. I'm so sorry I didn't get to be with you guys today. I will I will miss you, but I have so thoroughly enjoyed these sessions. And man, I just want to encourage you, if you're on Facebook and there's some dudes in our church that aren't on this page, invite them to this page. Let's pray together. Let's strengthen our relationship as men in our church. Let's encourage each other. Let's let's get to battle. Come on. Let's get to battle. Let's see some victories happen in people's lives. Love you guys. Have a fantastic last module.